So we have looked at the theoretical foundation of delaying CMOS. We have looked at how to calculate resistance and capacitance in CMOS. Now it's time to bring everything together into a simplified model we can use to make back of the envelope calculations for delay in CMOS circuits. So the main issue here is that we have an inverter and this inverter, this CMOS inverter is loaded by a similar CMOS inverter, though not necessarily equally sized CMOS inverter, right? And we want to find the delay at the node V output one or V output. This is transistor MN1, this is transistor MN2, this is transistor MP1, this is transistor MP2. We concluded that the way to calculate this delay is to find the loading capacitor CL, which is CGN2 uh, plus CGP2 plus CDN1 plus CDP1. And then to calculate either RN1 or RP1, depending on whether we want to find TP high low 1 or TP low high 1. This allows us to find the time constant in both cases and thus find the delay. Now let's look at the expression of C gate. C gate is equal to C oxide times W times L. So it is C oxide times W times L. So um, C gate is proportional to W and to L. C drain is equal to Cj times W times L drain, not L, L drain. So C drain is proportional to W and it is independent from the channel length to a first order. The resistance, whether it is Rn or Rp, is inversely proportional to 1 over I. It was equal to Vdd over 4 I set. Now, if we look at I, I is proportional to W over L. And therefore, the resistance is inversely proportional to W over L, or resistance is directly proportional to L and inversely proportional to W, which makes all the sense in the world, because if you have a resistance, if you increase its length, it's going to increase. If you increase its width, it's going to decrease. And recall that the resistance here is the resistance of the channel, and W and L are the width and the length of the channel. And so R is directly proportional to L and inversely proportional to W. Now, this, 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 is, this is really, really important. This is critical. What this tells us is that there's no reason to a first order to size any transistor in a digital gate with a length, channel length, anything bigger than the smallest channel length that, that you can fabricate, i.e. you have to make channel length as small as possible. Why? Because everything is proportional to L. If you increase the channel length, you increase both the resistance and the capacitance, at least the gate capacitance, and so you end up with more delay, right? But if you increase the width of the transistor, then you end up with more capacitance, but less resistance. So there's a question here. Is it good to increase W or not? And actually the answer will be, it depends. It depends really on the balance of self-loading and external loading. And the reason that it depends is that we have an inverse relation for the R and a direct relation for the capacitances. And so when you have two opposite tendencies, that means that you have the, the, the um, you have the possibility of optimization somewhere here. But when you have everything being proportional to L, that means that L should be kept as small as possible. And L being kept as small as possible means that L should be the technology parameter. The technology parameter L minimum is the smallest uh, channel length that, be, that can be fabricated in the current technology. And so if you are in a 33 nanometer technology, L minimum is going to be 33 nanometers. And so for all transistors, L is going to be L minimum. So this is for all transistors, at least to a first order. And this is a fundamental uh, result. This is really important. This is critical. And so when we are told that W over L, the aspect ratio of a transistor is equal to, um, let's say, 6, this doesn't just tell us that this transistor is six times as wide as it is long, it also tells us what W and L are, because we can assume without even being told that L is equal to L minimum, and therefore that W is equal to 6 L minimum. And so this tells us everything about the size of the transistor. Now, having known this, we can look at the expression of Seagate, right, and think about what elements of Seagate 
belong to the technology and what elements belong to the uh, designer. And we find that C oxide belongs to the technology and W times L belong to the designer. But in fact, based on the conclusion we just made, it's not C oxide, just C oxide that makes uh, that belongs to the technology. It's C oxide and L because L is always equal to L minimum. So this whole thing is now based on the technology. And if you look at C drain, C drain is going to be CJ times L drain, which are both dictated more or less by the technology times W. And if you look at the resistance, it's going to be, um, you know, something like, let's just call that something X, right? Divided by W over L. But L is also L minimum. And so this whole thing is dictated by the technology and W is the only thing that really makes a difference. So our design parameter is not L. Uh, it's not W over L, it's not W and L, it is actually W, right? And W and W over L are kind of interchangeable in this kind of uh, way of looking at gates. So let's imagine that we define something called the unit transistor. And the unit transistor is basically the smallest transistor we can make. So we define two unit transistors, one PMOS and one NMOS, right? And they are transistors whose aspect ratio is one over one. This doesn't tell us that their width is equal to their length. It also tells us that W equals L equals L minimum for both transistors. And therefore, they are the smallest transistors that we can make. And for the NMOS unit transistor, we will define something called CGN node and uh, CDN node and RN node. These are the gate capacitance, the drain capacitance and the resistance of the smallest NMOS transistor. They are the gate and drain capacitance and the resistance of the unit and MOS transistor. Similarly, for the PMOS, we can define CGP note, CDP note, and RP note as the gate, drain, and, and resistance of the uh, unit PMOS transistor, respectively. And so these um, quantities. Uh, CGN node, CGP node, CDN node, CDP node, RN node, and RP node, they contain within them all the um, information that has to do with uh, material properties as well as uh, technology specific parameters like L drain and CJ and T oxide and all of that, right? So the question then becomes how do I derive CD, CG, and RP for a transistor which is not? unit transistor from these quantities. And so I have a transistor whose W over L is equal to a number X, right? And I want to find the gate capacitance, drain capacitance and resistance for this transistor in terms of CGN node, CDN node and RN node, because these are the givens. These three are the givens of the problem. And so we find that C drain uh, for this transistor is equal to CJ times W times L uh, drain. And CDN node is equal to CJ times W times L drain. But in this case, um, the, um, the W is equal to uh, L minimum, right? So this is L minimum. And so if we divide the two quantities by each other, CD by CDN node, it's equal to uh, W divided by L minimum. But W divided by L minimum is also W over L for this transistor which is equal to the quantity X. And so we know that CD for this transistor is equal to X, which is its W over L, times CDN node. And the same applies for our CDP node and calculating C drain for a PMOS transistor. Now C gate is equal to C oxide times W times L. And for the unit transistor, CGN node is equal to C oxide times W, which is L minimum, times L, which is L minimum. Now, if we divide these two by each other and remem remembering that L minimum is equal to L for any transistor, then C gate by CGN node is equal to W over L minimum, which is equal to W over L, which is equal to X. And therefore, CG is equal to CGN node times X. Similarly, if we want to find R for this transistor, it's equal to um, uh, VDD by 4 I set. And so it's going to be W over L times a voltage bracket square. And RN node is going to be 4 VDD over 4 W over L, which is equal to 1, into some bracket. And so if we divide 
these two by each other, everything is going to cancel out except for the uh, 1 over w over m. And therefore, rm is equal to rn naught divided by x. And so we have reached a really important conclusn. If we are given CGN naught, CD and naught and rn naught, then rn is equal to rn naught divided by our aspect ratio. Whereas CG is equal to CG and naught times our aspect ratio. And CD is equal to CD and naught times our aspect ratio. And the same applies for PMOS transistors as much as it applies for NMOS transistors. And so solving a problem actually becomes quite easy because let's assume we go back to the, uh, to the original problem. And now let's give random sizes to these uh, transistors. Let's assume this is um, size the two, this is size the six, this is eight, and this is four, for example. Now CL, and also let's assume that we uh, use CGN note equals CGP note equals CDN note equals CDP note equals C note. So we're assuming drain and gate capacitances are equal, and they are equal also for NMOS and PMOS, which is a, an assumption, but it's not a, um, you know, an outrageous assumption. Let's also assume that uh, R N note is equal to half RP note, so that RP note is equal to uh, two R N two R note, and R N note is equal to R note. And this assumption makes sense because um, we know that the mobility of holes is half the mobility of electrons, and so this makes complete sense. Now, how do we calculate delay at the node V output? First, we calculate CL, which is equal to CGN2, and so transistor MN2 is sized at 8, and its gate capacitance is going to be 8C node. Transistor MP2 is sized at 4, and its gate capacitance is going to be 4C node. Now let's calculate the drain capacitances, 6 C node coming from MP1 and 2 C node coming from MN1. And so the loading capacitance is going to be 12 C node, which come from stage 2, and 8 C node, which come from stage 1. So we have 20 C node loading capacitance, 8 of which are self-loading from the current stage and 12 of which are external loading from the next stage. Now, Rn is actually equal to Rn1, which is equal to R0 divided by the size of transistor 1, which is 2. And so, tau p high low 1, the time constant for high to low delay in inverter 1, is equal to 20 C0 times R0 over 2, which is 10 R0 C0. Rp is equal to Rp1, which is equal to 2R node divided by 6. And recall that we have to multiply by 2 in the numerator because RP naught is equal to 2R naught, not R naught. And this gives us a tau p low high 1 of, uh, of 40 C naught R naught over 6. And so a couple of points to notice here is that the, uh, if this inverter was um, completely unloaded, like if it didn't have any loading from the upcoming stage, it would still have a delay. Its delay would be limited to the self-loading of the current stage. So it would be loading, it would be limited to this component, this 8C node, right? But it would still have a delay. Also notice that we do not have equal TP high low and TP low high because of the kind of sizing that we chose for the PMOS and the NMOS. If we want equal delay for and MOS and PMOS, notice that for tau p high low and tau p low high, the um, loading capacitance CL is equal in both cases. What makes the difference is RN and RP. But since RN note is half RP note, then if we want equal low to high and high to, high to low delay, we have to size the PMOS at double the size of the NMOS. Which is the same result, if you recall, that we reached when we looked at the logic threshold of the CMOS inverter.